breaking bad habits and three ways to create new ones. Hello everyone, my name is Tessa. I'm the director of marketing at Idea Pros and I have two special guests uh, today and it will look like it's just Fred Carey, CEO of Idea Pros, but there's a cutie little baby puppy. Oh my gosh, she's yeah. so cute. <laughs> Maya, who was formerly known as Rufus, <laughs> Uh, we've had her for a total of three days. We thought it was a boy at first because that's what the people who we smuggled this dog in from Mexico to save her. Uh, oh. the boy, but uh, we found out quickly it's a girl and uh, she's crazy. She just jumped off the balcony this morning and almost killed herself. But That's so scary. Yeah. I mean, they're made of rubber at that time. So, you know, they're pretty flexible, but you don't want to have it going out the window. <laughs> Well, that was Maya. I know you were talking about breaking bad habits and like you're going through a lot of that with her, all of her bad habits that she's doing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but it haunts us as entrepreneurs, as people as well. So bad habits are really hard to kick. So I know you did an amazing uh, Wednesday live on Instagram that we wanted to tap into and, and talk about the business side of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, because every, everything I try to do between... Instagram, I try to focus more on us as people and, and dive into us uh, as entrepreneurs as well. Um, and this show is a lot more business oriented. However, they're, they combine and, and they're both the same in the sense that, you know, the argument is you can't be a, uh, a good leader if you're not a good person to begin with. So I like to relate all of them. And I thought this is a really great topic because you could start with, um, Oh, here's one of our designers. I was going to say, D-Tunes, hey! Oh, yeah. You're live on the Facebook Live. <laughs> yeah. He's going to have a, a product going through crowdfunding, and he's going in the other room and starting some filming. Yeah, we're Yay! A dope-ass video. Yes. video it. <laughs> Thanks, D-Tunes. You know, you got to get, you have to have a really hard time focusing right now because you have people right there. <laughs> people, dogs, yeah. But I am focused because th this is a really important topic and um, it really boils down to how you can take these personal things and bring them also to your organization because as, as an entrepreneur, you're going to start on your own, but you're going to be changing from an entrepreneur to a CEO. You're going to be switching over from a... a we used to call one arm paper hanger. Uh, my dad did at least and uh, a crazy thing, but you can imagine how, how busy a one arm paper hanger would be. And that's what you do when you first start out and you're going to change that to become a leader. And uh, as your company grows, being a leader, uh, it's great to have an organization that's full of good habits and that eliminates the bad habit. So while we start this on a personal level, we're going to see how this is going to apply to, to your business growth as well. Wonderful. Um, and I did not mute this time, so that's good. <laughs> I usually do. So I I know you. You, you had, you actually had four things that you wanted to go over that will help you to break these bad habits or that you need in order to break bad habits. But before we dive into that, I just wanted to see if you guys could answer in the chat, what habits are you really trying to break right now? We're going to talk about the ones that you're setting in a minute, but if there's a habit that you're trying to break, type it into the chat and we're going to come back to that in a little bit. So four ways, four things that you need to break bad habits, Fred. Yeah. So, and then we'll go into each of them, uh, obviously, but basically you need focus, you need time, you need support and you need a reward. Um, though, if you can start working with those four things, you're going to be able to take things that are bad habits and eliminate them or turn them into good habits. And um, is it all right if I dig into those? Yes, four? go ahead. And I'm going to put it up. So focus was the first one. We're going to go ahead and add that banner up for you. So focus. <laughs> wow. well, uh, you, we tend to lose sight of, of what our bad habits are, what, what our shortcomings are, what our, what, what our failures are. Um, we kind of brush them aside or we get really comfortable with them. Um, instead, you need to hone in on it. You know, what is it 
that is a bad habit of mine that's keeping me from doing the things I want to be doing. Because the problem with bad habits is that not only are they having you do things that you don't want to really be doing, but they're preventing you from doing the good things you want to do in their place. Uh, overeating could be replaced by eating healthy, right? So that's a good habit. It's a bad habit. So if you're doing a bad habit, technically, in most cases, it's replacing a good habit that you should have. And so to be able to focus in on what is this? Why do I do it? Why is it there? How do I get rid of it? The whole focus part of it allows you to clear that street. So it's no clutter. There's just you and your objective ahead of you. So it's really critically important that you're able to hone in on what that bad habit is. Uh, and in, in, in many ways, it's something that we've had for a long time. It could be something that we've had for years. It could be something that we've grown up with, like uh, <coughs> perhaps being argumentative or being stubborn, th things like that. And those can be, if those are eliminated, both as an individual and as a company, that leads to wonderful things, right? If you can get rid of being stubborn, that can be replaced with being determined, right? They're both kind of the same thing, but being stubborn is a very negative view of it because you have your opinion and that's it. That's all that matters. You don't want to hear. You don't want to change. You're not receptive to other information. But if you're persistent, if you persevere, if you're focused, then you want to gather information not only once, but all the time on a continuing basis so that you can take what you learn, the new things you learn, and switch the course that you're going on. So stubbornness, bad habit, and we can replace those bad habits with good. We start with focus, though. And we are focusing on the good habit that we want to create more than the bad habit. <laughs> Is that the way uh, to think of it? <laughs> not necessarily, but that, that that's a, a good thing to do. That you know, bad habits typically need to be replaced because they interfere with, with a good habit that you should undertake. But even without that part of it, if you know something is not good for you, if you know something that, you know, I find myself to be really argumentative, just removing that by nature is going to give you a good habit, yeah. right? Well, I know procrastination is one of the ones that you brought up. And I know a lot of us, what, there's other reasons why we might be procrastinating, but the core is still that you, you're, you know, not starting on something soon enough or whatnot, but it could be, you just have to change your mindset and put, you know, tasks, little tasks into place or break something up. Right. So it's just how you look at that. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and we'll get into that on oh. the building the good habit part of it, but on the bad habit part of it, again, figure out what that habit is and hone in on it. And then you, you can start knocking away at it. That's the first thing uh, you need to worry about. Awesome. And so that was focus. And then we are going to talk about time next. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this didn't happen overnight. Don't expect to fix it overnight. Uh, it's, it's it's something that typically when we have bad habits, they, they, we either had them since we we're seven years old or else we've had them in recent history. But typically it's something that has been going on for quite some while. So because of that, don't expect that you're going to completely change overnight. It's possible. And some people have done, uh, you know, quitting smoking, for example. I've heard of people that have quit cold turkey, but I've also had people that said, yeah, it's easy to quit. I've done so several times. Uh, <laughs> so you're not really quitting when that happens. So give it time. Understand that this is a journey to get from bad to eliminate that bad. And then the, the good habits will nurture themselves up um, behind that bad habit disappearing. Awesome. I think you have to give yourself some time to ha have space to fix this in your schedule too. It's not just give yourself time to fix it, but make some time <laughs> to fix it, whatever that is, right? Well, I think if you don't have time to fix a bad habit, then that means you have excuses, right? Oh, and that's good. So because if it's a bad habit, you don't need to make time. It, it should not be there. And, and that should be a priority to, mm -hmm. uh, think about because you can that eliminating a bad habit is one thing you can multitask you know once you've figured out what it is once you've focused in on it 
you can be practicing that all day long. When you're having a meeting with your company, for example, and you know a bad habit is that you want to assert yourself to the exclusion of everyone else, you can still be having that meeting and thinking about how to how to change that. Uh, for example, most of the time when I ask people in, in our company uh, their opinions on different things, I always try to go last, which I didn't yes, do before, right? <laughs> before, not understanding that the authority of what I, what I think carries a lot of weight just because technically it's my company, although it, it's all everybody's in a sense that, that works with us and partners with us. But I'm given some sort of deference because of my position. So that's not necessarily a bad habit, but it doesn't get you to the place that you want to be, which is take all these intelligent people around you and gather up all the information you can. And then by the time you do that, if you speak last, what you're going to say last is probably different than what you would said if you went first. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the point is you can multitask getting rid of bad habits. I think that's a great entrepreneurial tip anyways, to talk last and let everyone else talk first in general. That's such a good tip. But I do know that you, I put a little post-it note. So if I'm trying to change a habit, I put it where it's going to be. If it's on the fridge, if I don't want to eat something, I've seen people put that on where it says you're bored. Don't open this door. I've put it on my computer before if I wanted to prioritize my own time. So sometimes you need little reminders to make it come top of mind too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's, a, that's a good one. I would not use it uh, if my bad habit was that I used too many post-it notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, <laughs> true. Uh, <laughs> if you're trying to be eco-friendly, probably not the post-it yeah, notes. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's really important, this third one of support, because it is a lot easier to achieve when you have people there with you, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and again, uh, bad habits have taken years people that are closest to you have had to put up with them and in in some cases i don't know what the percentage is but probably significant those are bad habits that uh, are contagious and so it may very well be that if you find yourself let's go to eating you know eating poorly at home chances are your husband your wife your kids are eating poorly as well right so if you can get a support system in place that basically you can go to and say look this is what i'm trying to do and, and I need your support, I need your help, I need your guidance, you know, be part of my team with me, um, then that gives you the extra strength that when you're feeling weak, that you can go and get get the additional support that you need to, to make sure that you stay the course. Accountability partners, it makes a really big difference. I know Odin's over in the chat and I've you know, used coaches in the past or part of another colleague, somebody who's in a you know, similar business or an entrepreneur, I've used them to say, hey, call me out on this, ask me on Friday, ask me if I did this thing or not. And, and when you have someone else that's watching you, even if it is a fitness trainer, I mean, you, you, you double, you would second, you would take a moment if you were going to not hit that expectation for them, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's kind of the bad habit side of things. Yeah, as we said earlier, replacing them with good habits in some cases just happens by eliminating the bad habit, right? If you're argumentative and you let go of that, the good habit of being a listener shows up because you've eliminated that bad habit. But there are plenty of good habits that we know we want to start, we want to get into, and uh, a lot of times they become overwhelming. Um, for example, New Year's resolutions, something like 96% of New Year's resolutions never get made, and, and, and or they do get made, they never, they never followed up on. And the reason is that we have these lofty goals. Uh, we're trying to look at the finish line right at the very beginning. It's like if... Uh, Michael Jordan woke up and decided he wanted to be a basketball player and he gave up a month into it because he couldn't shoot three pointers, right? So uh, good habits take time. And so to establish good habits, the very first thing that I like to suggest and I like to do is to start small, start small. Mm -hmm. Because if you're like, hey, I want to be in great shape, you're going to go to the gym tomorrow and the day after you're not going to notice anything and you're going to go the day after that and you're not going to notice anything and the day after that 
and you're not going to notice anything except maybe sore muscles. It's, it's taking time that's going to get you to where you want to go. So don't expect overnight miracles. So let's suppose I want to get in better shape. I want to work out. Guess what? Start with a one minute exercise. One minute. Anybody can do that. Make the good habit that you want to get into really small and then grow on it because good habits are repetition. And if you can start that repetitive process with a real easy layup, then I saw Odin talk about walking 5,000 steps um, every day. That's his new good habit. But you don't have to start there. Walk five steps, then 10, then, then 20, 25, 50, uh, and just keep walking five steps impossible by the way but it's a, <laughs> the point of reference uh start small uh, for example you want to you want to start writing you want to create blogs uh, and and you've never done it before start out by writing two or three sentences you know just get on the path of getting to where you want to go don't focus on the end zone yet focus on taking those first two or three steps and if you ease your way into good habits that becomes easy to do and then you can grow from there now that you already have the mindset to do it absolutely i know kyle says persistence pays for sure on yeah. this and those small goals i mean one of the other points that you wanted to bring up is that we should reward ourselves and start having that uh, mindset of i achieve this i got a reward and now i'm going to move on to the next thing and it teaches your brain to see it as a positive thing, right? <laughs> yeah. And 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 frankly, that was my my fourth point about eliminating bad habits, but it applies to good habits as well. That uh, if there's a reward system involved, then then you can praise yourself. And when you can praise yourself and show this tangible result of it, hey, if I do this, like I'm trying to lose ten pounds, and and when I lose five, I'm going to go out and buy a new dress or I'm going to get a new suit or I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. If you can tie rewards into behaviors, just like you're trying to train this puppy not to jump <laughs> off the balconies. Um, if you, by the way, the dog will not come off the bed now. Uh, so she learned on her own very quickly. Uh, but if you can, if you can reward yourself for continuing good behavior, then you're going to be more motivated to do so because when you have that reward system, then you have a goal and you got your prize, uh, your trophy uh, at the end of that. So that really helps as well. And little things like I had this plant piece. And for me, I had to accomplish a certain amount of tasks and I was going to be able to decorate. And that's the fun thing I wanted to do was to be able to decorate. So hey, I, I was able to get my whole little plant system, but it was piece by piece. Each plant was a reward for something else that I finished. So for me, I can look at that all the time in my videos with Fred and think, oh, I accomplished so much. <laughs> so. Oh, I'm going to have to send you a bigger plant because you, <laughs> you do accomplish a lot. And um, those plants don't do justice to everything you've done for us as an organization and for our partners. Thank you. You make me cry. <laughs> um, Sage also says it's he always celebrates when he achieves his goals. That's awesome. <laughs> well, and I think you have some tips for us too, right? On ways to. Uh, well, mm -hmm. yeah, back, back, back to the good habits. So, you know, uh, one of the things that. He made me blush. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make it back on him. <laughs> one of the things that we do uh, when we're trying to figure out good good habits is we don't do them. There's something holding us back. And we got to hone in on what that is and, and fix it. And if you, you don't do it, you're never going to get there. For example, somebody could say, yeah, I really want to work out. But, you know, to me, it's just it's a hassle, the whole thing. If you dig into it, you might find out that the hassle is I got to get up. I got to get dressed. I got to go in my car. I got to join a gym. I, I have to go in there. All these people are all buffed out working and huffing and puffing. And I'm trying to lift three pounds and, and, and having difficulty and I'm out of shape and I don't want that embarrassment. That could be the underlying thing. Not that you don't want to work out, but that those set of circumstances aren't appealing to you. Buy some bands, buy, buy some weights at home, get a bike, you know, work out at home. So if you can identify what is holding you back many times you can eliminate that by finding a, a, another solution getting really to the root of the problem um and and that is uh, <clears throat> one of the 
one of the key elements. There, there, there's a last thing that I like to do. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, we're all human. Uh, and to be human means to be frail, to make mistakes, to, uh, to not live up to our own expectations, and, and to have failure. We all do as human beings. You can look at the most successful human uh, that you can think of, and if you could sit down with them for a half an hour, you could ask them, what are they not doing right in their lives? And they'll tell you 100 things. Uh, so at whatever level we are in in life, we're going to make mistakes and we're going to fail. And so when we start a good habit or when we try to eliminate a bad habit, even there's going to be failure in it. And what I do to try to fix that is I, ha I have a fail once test um, because most of the time when we fail, we'll just we we'll give up. For example, you're going to go, you're doing the gym thing. Uh, Odin, you're walking your 5000 steps uh, every day. And then all of a sudden you miss a day and you're like, oh, screw it. I knew I couldn't do this. And you find that when you're doing things good for two weeks, two months, whatever, and you stop and you miss a beat, you're going to end up missing a beat for six months or nine months or a year. And, and it's always longer when you miss than it is when you're, when you're making it. So I have a fail once uh, test. So if I'm trying to really eat well and uh, watch my calories or eat really good food and I find myself splurging on a double Burger King Whopper and giant French fries and a huge Coca-Cola, which I wouldn't do. But <laughs> but uh, if I did, I would allow that. And I'll make up for it the next day. I'd treat that failure as just a component of my path to success. Um, and if you can do that, then you're going to give yourself the flexibility to be human. And you're going to not allow that momentary failure to dictate your path towards the positive goals and, and the good habits. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Fred. You got a lot of really good golden nuggets in there for us today. <laughs> and um, so, oh, did you, were you going to say something? I didn't want to yeah. cut you off. <laughs> and I want to wrap that all into a nice bundle. Okay. That works. <laughs> okay. Because on a, on a business level, all these things are not only valid, but they're critical and if you want to have a if you're growing a business you want to have a good company you have to find the good habits in your organization you have to eliminate the bad habits in your organization and those things are all equivalent the way you get rid of them is all the same for example you have a bad habit in your organization um, that sometimes uh, for for us uh, sometimes we don't communicate fast enough. Uh, and I know many of our partners can attest to that. And it's a bad habit I am still trying to fix, but we're doing things to, to as an organization to fix that as an organization. We're, we're doing a grading, internal grading of everybody and on the different communication aspects of it, there's people are rewarded for communicating well. They're called out and, and they're, um, they're highlighted if, if they're doing well and very responsive. Whenever we get one of our partners um, write to us and say, hey, so-and-so was really has been really great. We have these different things and I can always count on him or her to respond quickly and to get me the information I need. We'll highlight that to the whole organization. So you're taking somebody that has a good habit and you're showing everybody, even the ones that have bad habits, uh, so that they can see what a good habit feels like. And you try to move that along on an organiza organizational level. On the good habit side of things, you know, if you have different things that you want your company to be all about, you can't just wish it. You have to make it something that is really persistent. And that's the part when I talked about um, when you're getting rid of good, a bad habits, you need support system. Well, when you're building out good habits, especially in an organization, you need that support and you need that buy-in. If you want your company to be a certain way, everybody has to believe that. Everybody has to support those efforts and everybody has to be there to help pick you up as an organization when you fall short on those things. So all these personal things that we talk about, <coughs> the reason I have my Instagram page and this Facebook page, Instagram page focuses more on the personality uh, and while well, this focuses more on the business, but it all intertwines and it's all interconnected. Right? You can't have a great company without being a, a good leader. 
You can't be a good leader without being a good person at home. You can't treat your kids and, and your wife or husband and the dog poorly at home and expect to go in the business and all of a sudden be this great magnanimous person. So it all focuses on being good and doing the right things and let that permeate throughout your life, both in business and at home. And you're going to be a lot happier for it. Awesome. Well, actually, Stephen was just saying that we are doing a great job communicating with his project. <laughs> so thank you, Stephen, for that. And I know we have um, Craig, who shows up and actually works on his innovative ideas in hour long sessions. And he makes time for Idea Pros on Friday. Thank you so much for that, <laughs> Craig. I uh, yeah, appreciate that. Really and we actually got one more comment, and that's from uh, Clarice, Dr. Clarice, and about communication. So thanks. I'm, I'm glad. See, we're making a difference, Fred. We're changing our habits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I also got 10 partners that would come on and, and tell me we don't communicate so well. So it's, a, again, time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the elements I talked about, you can't change these things overnight. Bad behavior changes with consistency, with encouragement, with the support system. And um, the people that you're not doing such a great job for, as long as they know that you're trying harder and that you recognize what your issues are, whatever those shortcomings are, um, that is appreci appreciated. And even if that person is the subject of your bad habit, they're going to support you because they know you're trying to make it better. Awesome. It's all about the community. It is. Well, thank you so much, Fred, for, for this time with us. And um, we'll see you next week, hopefully. And yeah. oh, gonna... yeah. maybe put the Instagram. Link. I am going to put the Instagram video right in there. So if you guys want to check out Fred's live session that he did on the Facebook reel, I'm going to put that in the chat for you. So you guys can go directly to it. He did have a lot of fun things, including the cute, cute little puppy that you showed us earlier, Maya. Is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's Instagram, not Facebook. Oh, no, I'm on Facebook. Uh, not yet. I don't know. Fred might put her up there because she's a cutie. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. We will right. see you next week. And everyone else, I'm just going to take a quick second and uh, recognize that we have so many of you and you are my diehards. Thank you for always being here. Martin, Kelly, Sarah, good to see you. Good to see you live today. Odin, of course, uh, we have Sean Reed over there with Sage Scheduler. So sageschedular.com. This is going to be an amazing app, guys. So you should sign up and get on the beta testing list for it because it's awesome. It's going to be epic. <laughs> and, um, of course, Craig and Ken with Crashpad Products. Oh man, it's across the room again. If you guys haven't already checked out crashpadproducts.com, it's a hitch that keeps you from backing your truck or SUV into a trailer. And I actually, I've, I am, we're getting a camper and now I'm going to be quite reliable, reliant on it because I don't want to get dents in my car. I don't know about you guys, but check out that um, crash pad products for sure. And then I had one or two others of you that I just wanted to grab. I know we have Jen, um, Dr. Clarice and thank you so much for popping on. I know you have made the time for us as well. Oh, get lock it up. So we have apps and products that we work with, but um, our newest, I'd say offerings are for ideas in general. So it's not just about an app or a product that you guys are launching. It could be a business because we have classes. Oh, you're welcome, Sage. We have uh, courses, we have validation packages, which can actually help you to get, you know, the foundation done of market research and those important things that can help your business really get going. Uh, just like what um, I want to say, oh, Craig, Craig did the validation package. So guys, we're here every Friday noon Pacific time. I love to see you guys back. You can hit the reminder bell so that you get notified when we go live. Um, you can also subscribe to get text notifications in the post. You can click on there to get a reminder when we go live. And we're going to open up something really fun. And that is going to be with you guys being featured 
on the show with us. And so if you are interested in being featured and coming on and telling us about your entrepreneurial journey or giving us some tips, you can submit your video to us. And so if you want to be featured, just type featured into the chat and I will get you guys all the information so that you can apply to be on it and um, and we'll feature you guys like Ken with Crashpad. Come on type featured because I want to be able to uh, feature you or Odin or Martin, all of you. I, we want to actually do these interviews outside of the Friday lifetime just to get some, some content out there for you guys, but also for us to find out what you can share with our audience, with the entrepreneurial audience. So we'll see you guys next week. Have a good one.